let's get down to it now. I am uh, the grants coordinator here. My name is Alison Osborne. I um, write and review council's grant applications for council projects to be funded. I um, have uh, almost 10 years experience in that role and um, I also have developed council's grant programs that you guys apply to. I have convened assessment panels. I have been an assessor and um, that experience gives me quite a breadth of knowledge across all the different facets of grant writing and grant assessments um, and hopefully I can share that information with you to help strengthen the applications that you guys do. Um, so the presentation today will take about half an hour as long as we don't keep dropping in and out. I apologise again for that. Um, Rebecca mentioned you can submit your questions via the um, chat room there and um, let's get to it. So I just wanted to start off and say that all grant programs are different. This presentation is not specific to council grant programs that we're, uh, we have open at the moment. It's general information that you need to um, take on board and mould to suit each application that you're applying for, whether it's a council application or state government, federal or any other application. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There are also rules to grant writing that I'll cover off later on, but sometimes, as with everything, rules need to be broken, except social distancing. Um, now, uh, um, so council grant programs, you will all be aware, we have three streams currently open. At the moment, um, they are still due to close on the 30th of April. I haven't received word that we are changing that at this point in time, but you will be advised in writing and on website and all sorts of uh, collateral that if we change that date. So um, work, continue to work towards the 30th of April. Um, we also have another, a few other grant programs um, that haven't opened yet, the events and sports and rec um, at the, the events program at this point in time is scheduled to open in July but it really does depend how we go with this um, COVID-19 quarantine quarantining situation as to whether that will occur because clearly we can't be um, organising events at this point in time. Um, and I apologise for each time I say um, I never notice that I do that in real life until I'm now talking to a group of people so sorry about that. Um, the session overview today, we're going to cover off funding providers, what they like to see in an application, what the grant assessors are thinking, particularly when you put in a bad application, what you as an organisation should be doing to help yourselves get ready for these grant applications, managing perceptions, how you portray your organisation in your applications, the SMART principles, how SMART is your application. I'll give you some examples, some good and some bad, some do's and some don'ts, and I'll cover off budgets in a little bit more detail than the other other facets. Uh, we'll go through the rules for grant seekers and cover off other resources that are good for community groups, not only in grant seeking, but just in for general. Um, and we'll have uh, questions at the end. So what is a grant? It is um, Sorry, I've just had a message pop up that there's bad network quality, uh, which may be affecting the audio on this. So I apologise. Remember, it is being recorded and you can watch it later if you wish to drop out. Um, so what is a grant? It is money given to your organisation as a result of an application made to a grants program for a specific purpose. It is not a source of ongoing funding for a program, organisation or event, which a lot of uh, people and organisations actually feel that's what it is for. And it's not. So the UK will be available to you as a community for $4 billion available in community grants for you guys who are based in New South Wales. That takes in the New South Wales grants available to only New South Wales based or people um, anywhere in Australia. So um, the percentages that you've there are indicative only for the sectors that we've identified down the side there. 
um, because there could be a grant that falls into a number of different categories, so it's captured twice. But this is just an indication to you um, to see where uh, the government, well, it's not just the government, it's all levels of government really, um, are placing their focus at this point in time. So, um, competition is fierce for grant applications. Um, you are probably aware of that if you've ever applied for a grant in the past. The most common example, um, outcome of a grant is thanks, thanks. And I actually received a couple of letters this week where um, one particular grant program rejected three of our grant applications. Um, and they stated in that letter that they received over 2,700 applications just for that grant program. So there are a lot of organisations competing for the same bucket of money and you need to do your best to uh, put your best foot forward, so to speak. Uh, we then move into yes, but we can't give you everything. So they'll give you some partial funding or they'll say yes and give you everything you asked for. And um, it's a happy days. So now you have to move into project delivery. Um, so what I want you guys to uh, take on board primarily out of this presentation is that a grant application is not about you, it's actually about the funding body. So grant guidelines will usually tell you outright what the program is objective is or what strategy document they're working towards with their grant program. Program. For example, Council's three grant programs at the moment state that they're trying to hit their own business unit strategies with the Art and Creativity Strategy, the Northern Beaches Environment and Climate Change Strategy, and the Community Strategic Plan, which is Council's guiding document. So you need to be um, aware of what it is that the grant program is trying to achieve in, in offering this money out to community groups. So it's about you helping them achieve their goals. And so when and you're writing your application, you need to align your project objectives with their program objectives. And um, if possible, if they've got a uh, wider so if office of sport, for example, and they might say that they, the objective of the grant program is to increase participation in sport by women, then um, you might also have a look at their, um, uh, their women in sport strategy, which uh, um, might not be mentioned in their grant document. It's not essential, but it, it just adds that little bit of extra um, strategic targeting in your application. So um, you also need to be making sure though that your targeting programs, grant programs that suit your project and then tailor your application to suit their objectives. So don't be applying to a grant just because it's available if your project is so far uh, left of what they're trying to achieve. Um, but then you highlight where your objectives and their mar theirs marry up. Um, I should also point out, I'm going to keep referring to project in regards to your application. I realise that there are people on here who are um, looking to apply for funding for an event or some other um, item. It could be equipment, it could be to run a program, but I'm just going to use project to define what it is you're looking to do just uh, to simplify the whole process. Um, I should also flag here again with uh, the COVID-19 and the restrictions around social distancing and potential further restrictions. You should be actually thinking about that with your applications that you're writing at the moment. Don't be putting in an application for an event um, knowing that nobody is allowed to uh, congregate at the moment. So just keep that um, in mind and make sure that you are um, addressing that in your application. If if you've got um, something that would be impacted by the restrictions and you're looking for a, at a council grant program, a current council grant program, please contact the offices that are listed in the various streams just to discuss your proposal and see what they have to say about it. Um, there are the phone link ups that are on the website, Council's website, uh, where you can book in a phone session to talk about your application and your, your project. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, so grant seekers, uh, sorry, grant providers are seeking outcome oriented, oriented um, outcomes. 
that, that sentence doesn't make sense, but you hopefully know what I mean. So specific outcomes, preferably quantifiable outcomes. It helps an assessor to determine the merit of your application if um, you've got something specific that you're intending to um, get out of running your project. Collaboration, um, that could be with multiple uh, community groups working together or funding contributions from other organisations. Um, and we've got the governance and accountability. There needs to be a level of confidence that you can do what you say you will. And this is where your organisation's capability and experience comes into play. So um, they also want to know that you will do what you say you will. Uh, so if your application is loose on detail and wishy-washy, then it it, there is nothing to assess you on basically and nothing to hold you accountable for. So you're not going to score well on certain um, assessment criteria. Property and transparency in grants has been a hot topic lately with the federal government sports rot affair that uh, many of you will have heard about in the news. Uh, if you followed that closely, you'll know that a minister got rolled and um, for giving grants to organisations based on, a, on their electorate rather than the prescribed assessment criteria stated in the guidelines. As a result, um, I would expect most, if not all, funding providers to be sticklers to their stated guidelines and eligibility criteria, or I would certainly hope so, um, so that they can make defensible funding recommendations going forward. And, uh, and I have to say, most of them do and have done in the past. This was hopefully um, an anomaly. Um, and value for public money. Most grant programs come from government, uh, whether it's the federal, state or local, and it's considered public money that is put towards projects that benefit a defined community. So you need to be demonstrating that and your community could be big or small small, it could be a, a sector of the community. Uh, you just need to be able to define that there is a community benefit, basically. Weak applications have no answer, which is self-explanatory. They just literally don't put an answer to a question in form. Um, but just as point, pointless as not putting in an answer is when um, they just waffle, they don't actually answer the question. So they've written something, but it doesn't say anything. Um, these other items here, no community benefit. Uh, no, um, uh, sorry, I'm just throwing myself off. So no, no community benefit, but focus on the benefit to the applicant or organisation rather than the wider community. It's okay to have subsequent benefits to your own organisation, but why would the funding body give you a grant if the benefit didn't extend beyond your own little realm? Um, I've mentioned collaboration or track record. These things aren't essential in an application, but they help. So if you are starting an application or starting out an organisation and have no experience in either managing a grant or or delivering a project similar to what you're proposing, then don't be asking for a large sum of money up front because we have no evidence to support your ability to, to deliver such a project. Professional credibility can be utilised even in voluntary organisations, which many of you will be. Um, many professionals, current and retired, can bring a wealth of experience to a volunteer project uh, and they should be highlighted where it's relevant to the proposed project. No approvals or authority. For example, our sport and rec infrastructure program is for works on council owned facilities. This program um, specifies that you, you need to have sought and ideally written approval from councils as do. Um, other projects might need a number of from council and other authorities, um, the police, liquor licensing and the like. Um, but um, certainly not least is the link to the uh, program objectives. Remember, it's about, about them and about their objectives. So the next slide. Um, weak applications can and often do leave applications scratching their head. They don't know what the application is trying to achieve. They don't know what we're asking us to fund, particularly if they've got a bad budget table. Um, sometimes uh, applications come in that clearly they could have 
uh, worked with another community group or organisation to uh, get better outcomes than the, what they were proposing. Um, sometimes you think, why, why didn't the applicant read the guidelines? They're asking for stuff that are clearly stated as ineligible items. Um, uh, why would we fund this? So if you haven't identified where your community benefit is, for example, then uh, like I mentioned before, if it's all about you, then why would a funding body want to find, fund your project? And sometimes you can tell that somebody has spent 10 minutes cobbling together an application. And trust me, it takes a lot longer than 10 minutes to write a good application. Um, so in an ideal world, um, you would have your organisation details in a single place, you would have a grant strategy and you would, um, depending on the number of projects that you were looking to fund, you would have a, a couple of project um, templates done. So um, it would be nice if you were so organised, it would be a piece of cake to pull an application together. Um, but hopefully if you if you do come get around to doing this sort of stuff then uh, it will help you in the future so organization details the corporate info the items um, listed in the left hand column would ideally be kept in one place and easily accessible to the person or persons who are usually writing your grant applications um, the left hand column is utilized in almost every grant program going but I was surprised when I started first started reviewing our council grant applications that came in, the number of organisations that didn't know whether they were registered for joint GST or who they were incorporated with, um, or even if they had an ABN. Um, so if you can keep that information all in one place, it will help you <laughs> save you a lot of time going forward rather than hunting it down each time. Um, the items on the right hand column are nice to have items that are readily prepared. Some applications want to know your mission or vision statement or what you do and it's good to just have a little um, paragraph around that that you can tweak each time. Um, and uh, previous grant wins is useful. Some applications want to know uh, this feeds into your organisation capability. The previous grant wins or projects that you have delivered. So um, having that information there, the name of the grant body, the amount that you were funded, the project name and the year that it was awarded is um, good information just to have easily to hand so that you can pull that together rather than every every time you put in an application going hunting and asking the same questions. Um, and also if if depending on what your organisation setup is, whether you do an annual report or you have audited fi financial statements, um, that sort of information is good to have and know where to find it um, because some some particularly if you're asking for a lot of money they will ask to see that sort of information um, and then this is your audited financial statements not not just your um, transactional bank account for the organization um, a grant strategy so um, it sounds really uh, high, high, <laughs> um, very serious, but it's not. It's just about um, identifying potential grants. Um, we've actually got a um, grant search tool on our website, which I'll cover off at the end of the session here. Um, it allows you to search for grant funding that um, might be suitable for the project that you wish to implement. Um, and if you do go in there, have a look through, see what's available and you can start to build a strategy for what you might apply for when they become open in their next funding round. Um, so identifying your potential grants through that. Nominate, I think it's a good idea to have somebody in your organisation, if you're large enough to do this, um, as a grants coordinator. So that's their job. You know, you've got your president and your treasurer and you have a grants coordinator. Um, and that person can take responsibility. They don't do it all. They should be sharing it and, and allocating out jobs, um, defining roles and responsibilities in who is going to do what. Um, and be prepared, basically. Have that information that I had on the previous slide um, ready to roll when those grant programs do become available. 
pull and open up because sometimes you're not left with much time to actually pull all your information together, particularly if you're a volunteer organisation. I find it hard enough even in, in council trying to pull the information together by people who are at work all the time, um, let alone a volunteer organisation who um, aren't required to be at <laughs> work, if that makes sense. Um, the pro template I covered off, it, it doesn't have to be, uh, it can be simple or complex as you like, but basically it covers off the need or problem that you want to address, which will um, form, it will give you actually information and help you, you write a grant application later on. Um, the solutions that you want are available. You might have an option uh, to, to deliver it this way, or you might have option B to deliver it an alternate way, and they might not both be um, viable options through this one particular grant stream. So um, if you think about the project that you've got and the different ways that you can deliver that, then you've got there ready to roll as a grant program opens up. Um, include things and elements that you wish to uh, implement to fix or deliver the project that you want to do um, and how long each one might take so that you know um, a lot of grant programs will say you need to deliver your project by X date or you have to do it within one year or two year. Um, there, are, there are conditions around delivery time frames that you need to be aware of so you need to know how long. Um, um, your project is going to actually take to think outside the box. Um, look at a variety of funding uh, sources to get a project over the line. Uh, many local organisations rely only on, on council funding, and this is obviously a lie. So with a uh, very pretty graph, um, it, our council funding is just a drop. For the money and I and I encourage you absolutely to go for council funding but don't limit it only to council funding you should be looking at all these other grant programs that are out there um, these examples that I've got on screen at the moment are just a couple of projects that we've delivered with uh, multiple grants through um, various funding bodies uh, to help deliver the Burt Payne All Abilities Playground up in Newport and the Church Point Master Plan, which is still ongoing, but uh, multiple grants fed into both those projects to help uh, supplement council um, capital funding. So uh, managing perceptions. Um, this feeds into the pre-prepared information that I mentioned earlier. It can include your group's history or board setup. But what I'm trying to demonstrate with this information on the slide is that the funding body wants to see your mission and objectives and find out who you are. So while a bowling club is there um, so that its members can play bowls and visitors can play bowls, it's also a place that provides social interaction. It bridges the debt generation gap and it reduces socialisation, which is um, a significant issue uh, that many community services and community development programs are trying to address. So rather than this group just wanting to play bowls, it has multiple layers and they are able to articulate that and demonstrate that they're thinking beyond um, their weekly game of bowls. Perceptions and attitudes. Um, again, you may recall at the beginning of the presentation, I gave you a de definition of a grant. That is that a grant is not an ongoing source of funding for a project, program or organisation. What is on the screen at the moment is um, an actual response that we got to a question in our events um, grants program a few years ago that asked the question, do you have a plan to make your event self-sustaining into the future? Um, this is because uh, we don't want to be funding events um, forever. We want to be providing seed funding um, and help events grow uh, to the point where they are self-sustaining. And we got this answer that you can see on the screen um, uh, that um, really actually shocked all, all the assessors um, at, at the time. And um, unsurprisingly, this application, it had other weaknesses, 
uh, but this application did not receive funding through Council's grant program. So um, guidelines and other information uh, provided by the funding body are a must read, and I don't mean that they're a bestseller but because the information contained in there, while dry, is essential to you, the applicant. You need to review the grant application to see what information and supporting documents you will need um, and think about how uh, to best answer the questions. Sometimes um, there are questions in there that, that you think are repetitive and uh, why are they asking the same question twice? That's not what they're doing. Um, they're actually trying to tease out different information, <clears throat> excuse me, from you um, to help uh, fill in any knowledge gaps that they've got. So remember to keep in mind the objectives of the grant program or, um, or grant body um, when writing your application. Excuse me one sec, I just need to have a drink while um, <clears throat> excuse me. Eligibility and suitability. So you need to be sure that your organisation and project are eligible and meet the objectives to a good degree. So you will know that by reading the guidelines and frequently asked questions. And if you're still not sure after reading that, um, then ring the grant body and ask them. Tell them who you are and what you're doing and they will tell you whether or not you would be considered eligible. Links to strategies and plans. This can go both ways. So all applications will ask you how your project meets the grant program objectives, but some also ask how your project meets your own organisational objectives, strategies and plans. For example, we get um, in my role writing for council, we I will often reference back to our community strategic plan and how um, the project that we're proposing to deliver ties back to our community strategic plan, which is um, done by engaging our community and finding out what what our community wants to deliver. So it's um, it's a it's a cycle that we work around, and we're all trying to feed into uh, what we're all trying to deliver. Does the timing work? I mentioned that earlier, making sure that um, you can deliver your project uh, within the funding timeframe that they have um, expressed in their guidelines, whether it's one year, two year, or by 30 June 2021, for example. Um, they need to know that you can deliver it, and that's because their budget cycles are dictated um, by uh, higher up. Uh, we've got um, budget allocated, it needs to be spent by a certain time frame. And if it's not, then, and you haven't delivered your project, then there's the risk that they can pull the, the uh, funding back off you. So you need to um, be realistic in your timing. Um, sometimes, um, Sometimes uh, this is referencing the uh, bottom point, is the effort worth the potential reward? Um, sometimes it's not. So I have actually gone in um, with a, a project officer here at council and we've looked at grant applications where we were going to ask for <clears throat> a, quite a relative small amount of money and the amount of information that the grant body wanted, including the uh, reporting, after the fact, if we were successful in that, it was just too onerous and it wasn't worth the um, small amount of money that we were going that we were going to ask for. So we actually just didn't apply because it wasn't worth um, the effort to actually do that. Um, grant conditions uh, again, timeframes for funding to be spent or projects delivered, promotions and marketing. Um, uh, Almost all grant programs will require you to acknowledge the uh, funding body in um, any marketing material or signage um, and that sort of stuff. Um, there are always reporting requirements. Um, and as I mentioned, some are more onerous than others, um, but you need to be aware that you will be required to do that. You generally need to have, um, depending on the project, but you generally need to have at least public liability insurance and sometimes you need to have above and beyond that stuff and uh, legal permission and approvals to actually do what it is that you want to do. 
Before you start, checklist. Do you have organisational support? Internally, is your project supported? And do you have, if it's needed, approval, whether it's from the president or the board or whoever, to apply and commit organisational funding and resources, if that's what you are intending to do? Do you have the skills and capacity to deliver what you want to? This could be just um, project management and you're just going to engage a contractor, or it could be that you're intending to run a series of workshops using an internal person as the facilitator. Um, just know your limits and capacity to do what it is you want to do and um, how you're going to actually deliver what you intend to do. Um, do you have any established partnerships or external support for your project? Um, now that could be, for example, if a sporting group wanted to uh, do something on a council sports ground, but they're not the only user. Um, there could be, if it's if it's soccer, who want to put in an application, they'll need to speak to the AFL and the rugby league groups or the baseball groups, whoever else it is that, that uses that same facility. If you can demonstrate that you've discussed that and got their support to do whatever it is you um, propose to do, that will actually help you immensely. Um, uh, do you have um, evidence of, oh, sorry, that was the end of the last point. I keep going off script. I apologise. Um, now, your pitch. What is your pitch? So this is, this is about, um, like I said, your project template earlier. Um, this, is what, this is the problem that you're trying to fix or, or what you want to improve. Um, I know this because, you know, say it, it's, fixing up the ladies' change rooms at the local sports ground. Um, I know this because the, the women have to go and get changed in the car or they can't have a shower or whatever it is. Um, the good news is that we can fix it by uh, uh, expanding the change room facilities. Um, it's going to cost X amount, so on and so forth. So just know what your pitch is, what it is you're trying to fix and how you're going to do it. How smart is your application? So uh, many of you will have heard about the SMART principles when writing goals or objectives and the like. Um, you can see down the left, we've got the SMART, uh, which stands for the specific, measurable, uh, attainable, lost time. Um, some some organisations um, use different words, uh, against those, but um, instead of attainable, it might be achievable, but it's the same principle that we're working towards and you should try and um, apply that when you're writing your grant objectives or um, um, and, and working on this sort of stuff. So, um, for example, the uh, federal government awarded a grant to the Great Barrier Reef Trust a few years ago. You might have heard about this in the news. Um, the, the government was actually criticised for awarding this grant. It was millions of dollars, um, millions of dollars to this uh, trust to do, you know, which a, a great thing and try and improve, improve the, the Great Barrier Reef. But the um, application that they submitted, they were criticised because the goals uh, were too broad and general and their goals um, and objectives were actually um, improved management of the Great Barrier Reef and management of key threats to the Great Barrier Reef. They're like motherhood statements rather than what is the objective. Um, I'll go into how to write a better objectives later on, but you just need to think about um, how that's coming across, the detail that you include in that. Um, so when you're doing that, I want you to consider um, your who, what, when, where, why and how and tie it in to those smart principles. So um, uh, the next few slides I'm going to uh, gloss over. You can come back and look at these later. It's, it is your um, why, what, how, who, when and where. Um, and they, uh, they're prompts for you. You don't need to, there are a lot of items that I just flicked over really quickly um, and you'll see it online later on, but they're just uh, prompts for you to think about when you are preparing this. Um, I'll go back up for example. Um, 
who under the who, who should be involved and are they in this project? Who is responsible for managing the project? Who are our partners? Who are the beneficiaries and target audience or stakeholders? Who is supportive of the project? Who else is providing funding? And who has done this before? So clearly those items aren't going to come into play with every single application that you put forward. Um, they're just prompts for you to think about um, how to strengthen your application. Uh, so we have definitions in grants land. We, and that doesn't apply just to grant land. Obviously, these are words in the real world. Um, but objective, objective is to improve, um, is what you or the grant maker want to achieve. So you'll have objectives from the grant body who, and they state that in their grant program. And you will also have your project objectives. So um, for example, uh, an objective might be to improve disability access at the such and such community centre. An outcome would be the change that it will make to people's lives. Um, so, for example, if I use that disability access objective, the outcome would be an outcome, not the only one, would be reduced social isolation. Uh, isolation sorry. Um, an output is what will actually be done and um, quantifiable outputs are actually uh, better, but not essential. So an output in this instance might be two lots of um, dis DDA or, or disability um, compliant access ramps and one accessible toilet. Um, and the impact is what will remain in the long term. So, and in this instance, you might say that the impact was improved participation patient rates for people with a disability. So that's just a very quick and simple um, example um, applied to those definitions. Verbs are great for objectives and outcomes. Words like increase and decrease, improve, upgrade, install, reduce, encourage, provide, restore. There are plenty of them. Um, but they're good to keep in mind when when you're like, oh, oh my gosh, what is what is the objective of this? What, what are the outcomes? If you actually think about it in terms of these words, these verbs, it's, it's what are you going to do? That's what a verb is. It's a doing word. Let's um, think of it in that, in that way. So Coming up next, I'm going to cover examples to demonstrate to answer grant application. These are examples from real applications that we have put forward or um, I have seen um, through the course of my job. So, so uh, what is your project is um, a question that is always asked. It's usually in the form of please provide a brief description of your project. Um, they will usually give you a word limit um, and actually word limits are important to pay attention to regardless of the question. You should look at the word limit as a guide to the amount of information that they want you to provide. Remember to provide relevant information and not waffle, but if they say 50 words, that's just a few sentences and you really need to be really quite succinct. Um, but if they say 500 words, you've got a mini essay there and they clearly want a lot more detail from you um, and you would incorporate your smart principles to your who, what, when, where, why and how. And I'll show that again. Coming, coming up soon. So think about the purpose of the project description. Sometimes they'll tell you um, that it will be published on the website um, and other promotional material if you're successful in getting the grant. But usually it's just the setup for the grant assessor to understand your project and its objective. So um, you, you really need to cover off that who, what, when, where, why as much as you can in that project description so that they have um, when they first start reading your application, they have a good understanding of what you're trying to deliver with your project. So uh, project description, this is one that we submitted for, um, in Manly obviously, for bollards down at um, the wharf and Corso. Um, it was for a community safety I think was the fund, community safety fund, um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Um, but what you can see here, you don't have to read it at all, but I've, I've highlighted it in different colours there just to show where I've done our who, what, when, where and why. So the who is covered off in pink, the what is in yellow, when I haven't actually addressed in the project description, but the where is in purple and the why is in blue. So it's you can see there that out of the um, the five, you know, who, what, when, and where, why's, I've done four. Um, I've just realised I didn't actually highlight how. It, it's in there too um, with the bollards. So anyway, the, the point is, um, I'll fix that for the next presentation. Um, the point is that I'm covering off those different elements when I'm talking about these things. The next slide is another example that um, I won't go through the, the who's and what's, but you can see it's got the different colours in there as well, which cover off those elements as well. Um, so that's just another really quick example. I don't want you to spend ages reading through, through these things. It's just uh, to demonstrate that we cover off a lot of those elements in the um, when we're writing the application. So um, example objectives actually re relate to that previous slide, which was an environmental education piece. Um, and these are example objectives that are really uh, quite good and defined. And you can see that the first one there to encourage there's your there's your um, verb there and then we go into to the specific details 255 225 food related businesses in pit water public commit to give a fork which was the project title um, about key environmental issues and you can see they're quite specific they're, they're using those smart principles to define what it is that they want to achieve through this program. Um, outcomes. So, <clears throat> excuse me, as I mentioned, I developed Council's um, grant applications for, for submission to other funding bodies. This one is for a new columbarium wall at Manly Cemetery. The um, statement um, what outcomes will the project deliver? A new columbarium wall with 496 niches is what I got from the project officer when she gave me her draft application. Now, this is actually not an outcome, it's an output. So uh, in her application, she'd actually missed the opportunity to define the benefits to the community um, by not answering this question appropriately. So when I've gone in and amended it, that was this on your screen now is actually what we put into the funding body. So it's a lot um, more detailed. You can see again, the colors there, um, the pink and the blue demonstrate the different um, components there. And in this example, the blue text here are the objectives of the grant program. So what I was doing with this application was um, highlighting where my project actually addresses their objectives um, and the pink text is how the project addresses those objectives. So I've got the pink object, uh, the, sorry, the blue objectives that I'm trying to meet and the pink text is how I'm doing that. So you can see that it, it, it dips in and out and it changes and the rest of the text is actually talking around how it's going to happen. It's used all those principles, the smart principles, the who, what, whens, um, and so on. So we, I've expanded that simple sentence for a new columbarium wall with 496 niches into um, a multi-paragraph response because bearing in mind the word limit there indicated they wanted a lot more than a single sentence. So this page here are these outcomes are um, another draft application that I've reviewed prior to submission for a council application. This particular application had uh, two separate but connected questions about outcomes. The first one, what are your expected outcomes? And the second question, how will you achieve this? The re response that you've got on the screen there um, it is good information, it's great information, but it's confusing the outcomes and the implementation 
So when they came to answer the second question, how will you achieve this? They didn't really have anything to add and it would have been repetitive and, and a little bit confusing um, to the assessor in, in interpreting what they had to say. So what we've ended it to is we've simplified it. So um, because more isn't always better, it's um, sometimes it is, but it, as long as it's relevant. Again, I go back to the information needing to be relevant rather than waffle or off topic. Um, so the um, in answer to the first question, what you you've the response is on screen. Outcomes include increased stormwater capture and recycling, reduced consumption of town water and the like. Um, we've uh, simplified it and refined the questions, that, the responses that came in, and then used the leftover information from the previous slide to create the how are you going to achieve this? Because that's what it was. There was the two components and they'd melded it into one response. So we had to separate it and talk around um, the different activities. Um, uh, yep. So the next slide goes back to our Manly Corso slash Wharf Pedestrian Protection. Um, this was another double barreled um, question. Um, actually, it was the same grant program now that I think about it. Um, no, it wasn't. That's a lie. I take that back. Um, so this Manly Pedestrian Protection, um, you can see there the pink and the blue text. Again, the pink is the outcomes that we are trying to achieve and blue are the outputs. So the double barrel question, what are the expected outcomes and what will you be doing? So um, first question, what are the expected outcomes in pink? And the second question, how will you and what will you be doing? The blue is the outputs, which which identifies there. You can see 38 heavy duty bollards at this location. So it it's, it's spells it out in no uncertain terms, the locations that we were planning to put in bollards, what um, number and um, the type. Um, what other contributions are there? So uh, this ties into your budget questions. Um, Many applications uh, require a contribution, not all, for community groups. Um, all council applications that we are eligible for, we have to put in some sort of contribution, usually at least 50%. It's not That doesn't always apply to um, you guys, your community groups, um, but it doesn't hurt, absolutely doesn't hurt for you to be contributing something to your project. Um, and being able to demonstrate that in some way. Um, so in answer to the question, what other contributions are there? A project officer gave me a really high level general spiel. Northern Beaches Council will match the funding that is being requested, which is a requirement of the grant anyway, and will also provide a project manager for the project at an estimated in-kind value of whatever the figure was. Um, it doesn't paint the full picture of what was actually going on for this particular um, project. Um, it, this is the columbarium wall application again. And, um, you know, there are so many other costs that are related to this particular project that haven't been identified in the grant because uh, we'd already done it. But what we wanted to do was actually highlight that we had spent money doing um, investigations and geotechnical investigations, planning, submitted a DA, and all sorts of other things that costed um, actual money. And then we actually, and we also had an in-kind contribution of the project manager and other services in council that contributed towards that project. And so um, it's always good to hide, uh, highlight, sorry, um, those contributions and the wider scope of the project, even though the grant application had a very narrow um, 
uh, scope in that all we were asking for was 50% of the cost to actually build the columbarium wall. It's a larger project in itself um, and we have covered the, all the other costs up to front, up to date. So it, it shows not only a commitment financially, but the fund DAs and investigations and the like shows that we are committed to delivering the project, which will also um, help strengthen your um, application. Budgets, tricky, tricky budgets. Um, <sighs> budgets can be an amazing tool for you to demonstrate your project. So all the words that you write will be worth not very much if your budget doesn't make sense. So um, I'm going to talk, um, not great detail, but I'm going to focus on budgets for a bit. Um, these elements listed on this page that we're looking at now. Um, I'm going to have example income and expenditure tables. Uh, know the difference between the two because if you mix them up it's extremely hard for an assessor to work out what's going on um, if you include expenditure items as income or vice versa. It's always good to check the guidelines and FAQs for details on how they want their budget information presented. They will sometimes give you lines want to do and uh, you should also always make sure that your budget figures in your table tie back to what you've said in the body of the application sometimes you know i've seen applications come in that say they are going to purchase for example three um uh, three lots of sporting equipment for example but in the budget they've identified five lots of that same equipment so it doesn't tie back to it can map the whole entire um, scope of the project and the costs because you don't know which one they actually mean. So um, I will also talk about cash in kind. Cash income or expenditure is where something will actually cost money like the purchase of equipment. In kind contribution is something that has value but costs nothing um, in real cash. So volunteer labour, um, you would try to uh, apply a value to that like uh, $30 per hour times 10 hour is a $300 value in kind contribution. So you need to think about all those other things that are going on like I mentioned with that um, columbarium wall and the DA fees and stuff, they're, they're actual costs to us but the project management costs, the in kind, you need to think about the bigger picture and what is actually feeding into your GST. Firstly, know if you are registered for GST or not. Um, if you have an ABN, uh, that will tell you straight away whether you've got an ABN. If you actually look up your uh, if you look up your own ABN, it tells you whether you're registered for GST. Um, and if you don't have an ABN, then you definitely aren't registered for GST. Um, most budgets will want um, your budget figures to be GST exclusive. Um, so you need to think about how that will play out for you because it means that you won't receive a GST component um, in your grant funding. You still be required to pay GST on any goods and services that you actually had to purchase in the process of delivering your project. Um, <clears throat> If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. Partial funding. Um, you don't always um, get the full amount that you request. Uh, and when this is a possibility, the grant body may ask you if there is a smaller amount that you could work with to either deliver a smaller component or smaller scale event, um, reduce the scope of your project and what that might look like. The Community Building Partnership Program is a state government um, program and it is um, each state electorate is given um, a bucket of money. Our electorates that feed into the Northern Beaches all um, get $300,000. Um, and that particular program asks that question. If you are to receive partial funding, what would you be able to deliver and for how much? 
So it, it's worthwhile thinking, um, you know, go for your full amount, the full uh, project that you want to deliver. But also if there is a lot of um, that you can scale it down and, and maybe just ask for new sockets rather than the socket nets and the shear uh, for example, um, even though that program actually doesn't really cover off equipment, that was a bad example. But but my my point is, think about how you can downscale and shrink and still get um, something across the line that's going to help. Um, contributions I mentioned are always uh, viewed in a positive light and will usually help you score better on a value for money assessment. It's not um, always essential, but it does help. So um, yes, just be aware as well, if there is a mandatory contribution level, um, like I said, it's not usual for the community grant programs. That sometimes it is, so make sure that you are complying with eligibility criteria if it is there. Um, likewise, check the guidelines to see if you can can or cannot include things like contingencies or admin fees. Um, again, if you can't include it in the budget, it could throw out your figures and potentially um, your eligibility status if you are asking for um, things that you're not allowed to. And define the elements um, in your project, um, which I'll show you on the next screen. Actually, I'll just flick over to that now. Um, define your elements in your budget tables uh, as clearly as possible so that the assessors can see where your funding is coming from and where you will be. So on your screen at the moment, you've got income and expenditure tables. Um, as I said, the difference between income and expenditure is well, well defined, um, but a lot of people actually get them mixed up or are in such a rush that they put the figures into the wrong table and it throws out the entire application. So, um, <clears throat> on this example shows all the income uh, that you have secured or are trying to secure for this project. It will always have the amount that you are asking for in the grant application and other sources could be your own contribution that we've just talked about or other grants and other donations, other clubs, so on and so forth. Um, it's usually um, only for the cash component, not the in-kind because um, they will usually have a separate table for in-kind contributions. But again, read the guidelines and see how they want you to reflect. Um, you should split out, if possible, um, these income streams. Don't um, just put it in um, and say income is $100,000 and expenditure is $100,000 because that tells the assessor absolutely nothing um, about how how you are going to fund it, where the funding is coming from and how you're going to spend it. There's no value in something like that. Expenditure, um, as I said, this is what you spend your money on. So you can break it down in a variety of ways, depending on what your project is or what evidence you have to support the figures you're putting in there. This example is for new cricket facilities and it's broken down into major elements and the evidence that they provided was a quote from a supplier and a contractor that married up to these figures. So this was a strong, strong application. They had the breakdown, they had the supporting evidence. You'll also notice that the income total is the same as the expenditure total, $262,280. So the tables make sense on their own and as a pair. Um, so budget de detail is really important. Um, I've seen applications where the income far exceeds the expenditure, which leaves an assessor scratching their head as to why they might need a grant in the first place, except to um, you know fill their own bank account. So um, I've also seen budgets where the expenditure items have been included in an income table or vice versa, um, where you know, it just doesn't make sense. So like I said, your budget table needs to make sense by itself, but it also needs to tie back to what you have said in the body of your grant application. 
project name. Um, this is just uh, project names should be descriptive, accurate, if you can make it catchy just so that they stand out. These are a couple that I've come across um, one way or another. You know, some of them are interesting. The Nolan Reserve Cricket Net upgrade is not um, overly catchy, but it's descriptive. I know what they're going to do and where they're going to do it. So it's about, um, you know, I've seen applications that come in from a football club um, and they tell me in their application who they are and what um, location they're looking to do. But if the um, project name just says club upgrade or toilet upgrade, um, it doesn't tell me at first glance anything except that they want to do toilets, which is useful. It's useful information, but um, not really sufficient. So just think about that. Um, don't spend ages on a project name, um, but just include the uh, details so that it stands out from all the other toilet upgrades that come through that particular grant program. The detail. Um, <clears throat> activities, elements, detailed budget, realistic time frame, timeline, roles and responsibilities. Um, object, uh, sorry, this is, uh, I'm repeating earlier stuff now, so I'm going to actually flick through these. I've just looked at the time and this presentation has gone on a lot longer than, than I thought it would, sorry. Um, so these are the, this, this, this is the detail that you need to think about and be aware of when you're writing your grant application. Knowledge and information. Um, never assume that the grant assessor or body knows who you are or what your organisation does. So again, it's about that critical information at the beginning. Um, tell them who you are and or the aim of the project, how are you going to implement it, your beneficiaries, know all this stuff and include it in your, inf in your application. Questions to ask yourself when writing a grant application. What does the reader need to know? Again, don't assume that they know stuff beforehand. Um, why do they need this information? Because that, that might alter the way that you write. Um, what background knowledge do they have? What is the text going to be used for? I've covered off that. Um, who is the intended reader? Now that's interesting because some grant programs will tell you who is going to be on the assessment panel. So we might say that it's going to be, you know, the head of science, blah, 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 and they'll tell you. So if, if you are aware that you're going to have technical experts on an assessment panel, then you, you know that they're going to understand your acronyms or, you know, that really technical um, information that you include in there. But if, if it doesn't define that you're going to have technical experts on an assessment panel, then you need to simplify it and make sure that um, a layman could understand what you are uh, trying to get across. Um, this uh, feeds into the language and vocab, vocab. Make sure that that is appropriate for the intended reader and has all the necessary information being included. Um, <clears throat> what is actually useful to do is get somebody who has not been involved in the project to actually read your application before you submit it. And if they can't tell you what you are intending to do um, after reading your grant application and tell you that it all makes sense, um, make sure you ask somebody to do it who's going to tell you the truth. Um, because if they don't understand what you are trying to say in your grant application without knowing the background of your application, your project, then you need to rewrite it because you need to assume that the person on the assessment panel reading your application doesn't know anything about it. Supporting documentation um, is excellent and it will support your application, but that's the key word, it is supporting. You should never um, put an answer into an application form that says, see attachment A. Um, it, it, it's A going to annoy the assessor because then they have to go and find attachment A um, and read that rather than you, you adhering to the 100 word response um, that they are expecting to read. So um, keep that in mind that you still need to 
answer all the questions in the application form, um, but then definitely attach as much supporting documentation as they will allow you to, and you have um, that is tr true supporting documentation. Um, that could be your letters of support, uh, your finance statements, new newspaper articles that um, support your argument that there is a need for your particular project, um, any photos to sh that might be the condition of the tennis court um, surface that with tears in it, you know, photos are great evidence actually if, if that's the kind of thing that you're looking at. If there's any um, official research papers that back up your argument, um, if it's for um, construction works, if you've got design or concept drawings, um, just to help uh, flesh out the uh, written application and of course approvals if they're required. Um, these all make uh, really good supporting documentation and um, documentation is great, but as long as it's relevant. So don't, if they say, can you um, upload your financial statements for the year uh, 1920, um, don't upload the entire 150 page annual report with the president's articles and all that sort of stuff. You just upload those two pages for your financial statements. Um, just be um, mindful of that sort of stuff. Organisational capacity, I, I've um, covered that off already um, to a great extent, but it's it covers off your previous experience in similar projects. Um, a similar uh, in managing grants. It doesn't have to be the same kind of grant, but as long as you understand the concept of managing grants and the reporting requirements um, will help fill an assessor with great confidence. Um, individual and or organisational skills and qualifications are covered off that as well, whether it's professional, volunteer, all that sort of stuff. If you've got funding already secured for this project, definitely identify that there. You um, should be aware that you would never be granted money from, um, well, the same place or two separate places to deliver the same component of a project. But if you had uh, different elements of a single project that you could, uh, like I showed you with that Burt Payne playground, there were different elements there and I applied for different funding sources for different components of the same project. So. Um, definitely highlight that because if you can demonstrate that you've already managed to hook somebody else in to help fund your particular project, um, the next funding body will go, oh great, well, you know, I'm, I want to be part of that too and we can deliver something really great by actually collaborating and working together to deliver that sort of stuff. Um, depending on your um, project, you might be asked for a risk assessment or if you um, can identify um, what risks might be involved in delivering your project. Um, uh, I'm sure that um, the COVID-19 pandemic is a risk that nobody has identified up until now um, and it's had a massive impact. So, but if you can um, think about what risks realistically might impact the delivery of your project and what um, actions you uh, have in place or would take carry out um, to mitigate these risks, then um, knowing that and having being able to demonstrate that is, is really good. Templates and reports. Uh, if a template is provided, you should use it. You must use it. Um, it's been provided for a reason to help the people who are managing the grant get the information that they need uh, to carry out their own reporting because your reporting is linked to their reporting. I have to report on um, the grants that we um, give out. We put that information into our annual report and we write council reports on it um, and we are reliant on the grant recipient to tell us what has happened and how it's gone. Uh, um, so the reporting relationship there is is two ways and um, really important. So your success is their success. Um, your lessons learned will help everybody, not hinder you. Don't be afraid to say, oh, this went wrong um, or we sh should have done this. It's, it's absolutely fine to have that conversation with the funding body because you will learn from it and the funding body will learn from it. And whether that, whether 
whatever it is that went wrong, whether that is with the delivery of your project or the relationship with the grant, if there was some sort of condition that didn't work for you because of X, Y, Z reasoning, um, have that conversation because uh, council in particular, but there are other organisations out there, um, we review the grant program every year, we tweak it, we amend it um, based on feedback that we get and hopefully um, we are improving that every year. Um, your reporting should also be detailed but boastful and accurate. So don't be shy. Um, say yes, we did a great job and we excelled at this and we delivered that. It's um, you sh it's your chance to get up and and pat yourself and, and your team on the back. Reporting information. Um, when you get to the end of your, your project, you will need to um, do, do a, a grant acquittal and a final report to the funding body. And depending on the funding body, you might be required to submit invoices or receipts um, to show that the money was spent um, where it was supposed to be spent. Um, so remember to keep all that stuff in the right place and easily accessible. Your outcomes and outputs, um, measurable, quali quantitative or qualitative, um, be keeping track during the delivery of your project what you have done so that you can talk about it at the end. Any photos, um, I talked about photos further before when you're submitting your grant applications, photos of the after are really helpful as well. Um, the return on investment, now that could be um, financial or promotional, like I said, um, the uh, acknowledgement of the funding body is usually a requirement. Um, but for example, if you're, you've got a grant to run an event, to, and you should have the council branding um, and acknowledgement on your signage and stuff and that just and that is generally sufficient to satisfy a council event grant to have council's acknowledgement um, across whatever promotions you've got going on there. Um, now we're getting to the end so sorry I, I am dragging on. Um, when you've got a grant you celebrate with a happy dance or I do um, you say thank you to the funding body and you return the funding agreement, assuming you are still prepared to deliver the project as um, stated and as per the funding agreement. Um, you then obviously deliver your project, <clears throat> excuse me, doing what you said you would do um, and making sure you're keeping it up to date with your reporting. If you've got a variation, if you need to change your project, don't, don't be scared to approach the funding body. If something has gone wrong and you're not going to make the deadline that you have previously stated, get in touch because um, it's better to do it sooner rather than later and try and work out a solution together that um, makes everybody happy, hopefully. Um, invitations, you might need to invite the mayor or the local member or somebody to an opening if that is part of your project and again acknowledgement of um, the funding body in 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 materials. When you don't get a grant, which is more often than when you get, um, I use my favourite expletive, you don't have to do that of course, go for a walk by yourself and calm down, um, but you should always seek feedback from the funding body. Um, Sometimes it's really useful um, feedback that you can get. Um, council, we try to give you specific uh, feedback on your application. Um, other funding bodies will give you um, uh, feedback that is just uh, you need to refer to the guidelines a bit better, um, which is not very useful feedback and some places just don't enter into the concept of feedback at all, but um, you should always try. If you can, then definitely try and get it. Rules for grant seekers um, are things that I've already covered off um, first, uh, except for over on the other column, don't fudge. So don't fudge too much. I would like to amend that too. So uh, um, sometimes you're putting in a grant application and you don't have hard and fast 
details, but you need to be realistic. So don't um, expect to um, put in an application requesting money for a community garden and say that you're going to engage with seven local kindergartens and do um, gardening projects when there's only two kindergartens in the area and you haven't spoken to either of them. So just um, bear in mind, um, be realistic is, is what I'm trying to say, I suppose. Be innovative. Um, governments at all levels, I have to confess, are not innovative. Um, we struggle with that and we do re re rely basically on the community to be able to do things that we do. So by all means, be innovative, um, come up with new ideas and suggestions. That's really um, what grants are for, to try out new things and, and stretch um, boundaries, but you need to be able to demonstrate um, how it's going to work and that that, that you have got um, some evidence to support why you think um, this innovative activity. Um, um, be prepared. I have covered off most of that already, um, but I will stress don't leave it to the last day because that just um, is disastrous and full of stress for the person who is responsible for putting it in. Um, and don't copy paste answers. So, uh, and that means from either a previous application for the same project that was unsuccessful or within an application um, from one question to the other, because you think uh, and I did flag this before, but sometimes I've seen people copy and paste a response from one question to the next uh, in the same application because they think that the question is asking them the same thing. And it is not. They are never asking you the same thing twice. You need to actually read the question and see what it is they actually want you to say. If you're not sure what they want you to say, ring them up and say, what do you mean by that? Um, because like in my earlier examples I showed you, some questions are double barreled and you need to think about what they're actually asking you and what they want to, um, what they are trying to get from you. They're usually trying to glean extra information from you. Um, okay, we're nearly there people. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, Grant Guru, I mentioned, is a free service. It is on Council's Grants web page, which is the same page that you have registered for this uh, uh, seminar on. It's at the bottom of that page. Um, it um, is a free search tool. You can register if you want to, again, for no cost, and you can select the programs that you are interested in and, it, and the service will actually email you and say, oh, the, the such and such grant program has just opened or they've updated their guidelines. So it's actually a really, really useful tool for you guys to use. I use it to find grant programs for, for council to apply for. Um, so I recommend if you haven't already um, to go in, have a look, um, suss it out and see uh, where it gets you. Um, it covers off a lot of information similar to what um, we've gone through today, but it's also got um, other bits and pieces in it. Other funding sources, that first line there, grants.gov.au, is all the federal government grants that are available. It's not an overly user-friendly website, but it has everything there. And again, you can opt in to receive notifications on ones that fall into your um, area of interest. The next, the middle dot point there, the IMIS cloud, is um, it, it used to be called, called Community Builders, I think it was, Community Builders New South Wales. It's um, got a lot of useful resources in there for community groups, uh, not just on grants, but on governance and all sorts of other um, good materials. It's um, the website actually says it's been under development for a year and a half, um, but I did look at it before this presentation and they have updated. They do have fresh content on, on there that's been on that up, updated this year. So it, it's um, it's still worthwhile going on there. And the last one on there, ourcommunity.com.au is another um, social enterprise 
Science that has a lot of other good information on there um, for community um, organisations and is worth a bit of a look around as well. Questions, we are at questions. So um, Rebecca is in a different room to me. I'm not sure how we're going to play this. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, that All sounds right, good. That I would suggest you mute your good. microphone I while I ask a question I ask. and then we'll switch. Uh, okay, so we have two questions uh, so far. So if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the meeting chat. Uh, so both the questions we've received so far are on budget. The first one is, if I am waiving my professional fee, does that go under cash or in kind? Thanks, Beck. Um, that would go into in kind because it is not an actual cost that you would be paying anywhere. So you would include that as an in kind contribution to put in uh, your professional hourly rate, which uh, presumably would be higher than a volunteer $30 an hour. So you could put in, um, and I don't know what these rates are, but say you're an architect and you were waiving your fees for that and uh, uh, let's say your fee was $100 an hour, you would say one, um, you know, professional fees, architect, $100 an hour times, you know, 100 hours or whatever it would be um, and, and detail it there. If, um, for example, some applications don't uh, give, give you a separate table for your in-kind contribution, you would definitely want to include that in information somewhere in your application um, to help strengthen it. Um, so you, you, and this is where your project template and knowing your project beforehand comes into play because that is critical information to know um, beforehand. And if they, if the grant application doesn't specifically ask you um, that and it doesn't fall nice and neatly into a proper question that they're asking you, you need to find a way to fit that information into the application so that they're aware of it. Thanks, Alison. The last part of your answer then may answer this question, um, but you might also have additional information as well. So um, the question is how and where uh, do I show income and in an application. Um, sorry, you dropped out halfway through asking that question. Can you repeat it? Sorry, I can. And failing that, I'll type it in. Uh, so the question is how or where do I show income and expenditure on an application? How and where? Um, the, the grant application will usually, if not always, have two separate tables, an income table and an expenditure table. Was that, was that the question? I think it's getting an understanding that she will ask for that information. It doesn't, where should it be placed? Sorry, um, I'm losing, I'm now experiencing what you experienced when I was in there. Um, let's go back. And said the question's been answered. Have a look at the chat. Okay. Oh, like. Yeah. Chat. Um, 
how and where is it that one how and where do i show this or is it further up whose question is it that's the one um sorry so have we have, have we answered it I'm, I'm not sure if i'm still required to answer a question I think it's been answered now. Sorry, I was just talking and realised I was on mute. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming um, or joining us for this. Um, I hope it wasn't too traumatic for you. Um, we will be placing this up on the web as soon as we can. Um, so you can check back anything that you might have missed if we dropped out. Um, we'll be running another session in a couple of weeks online. It will be the same. You don't need to come back on. Um, and uh, unless you want to uh, log back in um for questions and CEOs. but otherwise this will be placed up on, on the website shortly good luck with your applications thank you very much